Trash Sailors is a one to four player co-op raft survival game where you are just trying to survive on each map. It has its own biome, its own enemies, and you're using the trash that you collect to repair your raft or otherwise upgrade your boat, fuel up your boat, or outfits for your character. It's been out a while now, six months. It had a rocky start, some issues with online multiplayer, but most of these were fixed within a week. I haven't experienced any issues at all. It has everything except public matchmaking. You can play just locally with up to four people. You can play online with only your friends, or you can play locally and with a friend or friends online in combo co-op. I did try this on Parsec as I don't play with friends. I just stick with uh, playing with randoms. And unfortunately, it doesn't run well. I was able to get one other person pretty reliably, but when I tried to get two or more people, most of the time they would drop even before the match started or even like, like when I was in the lobby. So you're just limited at best on Parsec to playing with one other person. And this is the biggest negative for the game because you need or you want, <laughs> you really need other people to play with for it being a worthwhile gameplay experience. It's up to four, but what I noticed is that when you play by yourself, you're able to just play like with an AI robot. You're kind of doing all the tasks. The enemies are really thinned out as well. You're not confronting as many. With two, it bumps it up and it goes on from there. But three or more for multiplayer seems to be the, the sweet spot for where it gets to be more hectic and you're kind of doing your own your own roles. You'll have one guy steering the boat, you'll have another guy kind of taking care of enemies, and another, another guy managing the resources. You have this like fuel tank, you can either convert the trash you collect into fuel, or otherwise you can just repair your raft. Now the stuff that you collect through each mission, you can uh, also upgrade the raft itself to having different things, like a stronger uh, like light on the front, or cannons on the side, and even like, again with this too, if you have a bunch of people playing, as you can see here, I got uh, a lobby of three. One guy's on the cannon, one guy's fishing, one guy is on the boat. Then it's a blast to play, because there's a lot going on. You're not just stuck with, well, this is what I'm doing. You're doing that while seeing the guy shoot the cannon, seeing the other guy look around with his with his light, or something breaks, and then, and then you have to, to fix it. That's where Trash Sailors really shines, is where all this hectic stuff is going on. It, 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 uh, there's like barely a class system here. The difference is you have one guy that's good at everything. That's like the grandpa character. Another person is good at the fishing. One guy's good at combat, that kind of stuff. So if you're playing by yourself, you're just gonna be doing the jack of all trades guy and you have that robot that, uh, that is helping you out. But having them do those different things, the, uh, the tasks are already signed and it works well. It, it gives it like a pinch more depth than just being this arcadey kind of a game. And this is like with a lot of games, they tend to be better than like games from the 80s and 90s, just because there's that little bit of depth where you're using, you're using your classes. And it, it works well with Trash Sailors, where you're gonna pick a character and you're, you're gonna quickly understand to use him for that. And you're gonna be doing only that because the other players are doing their own designated jobs, and it tends to be more rewarding. The inverse of this is um, most of the time I was playing by myself or with the AI guy, one other guy, I'm doing multiple jobs. And it's constantly kind of a pain because I'm not really thinking. It's just, uh, it's like the, the hectic in reverse of, oh, I gotta do this, oh, I gotta do that. And then the, the danger isn't really there because the enemies are thinned out. It's more I'm just kind of managing my raft. And since it's a, an arcadey, kind of a game with trash sailors uh, like this part tends to be pretty superficial but apart from the multiplayer and how that affects gameplay the rest of the gameplay is is excellent actually the, I didn't notice like glitches or any issues the physics in particular like you'll have a boat going past you and then there'll be a, like an iceberg or there'll be a wave and it also affects the enemy AI adding to that nature and again more players that you have, you're gonna have more enemies going around. You're gonna have more activity, more more stuff going on. Trash Sellers is played at this level-based uh, story overworld view that you're seeing here, where you collect these three 
bottles that have like a map or something in it. And then uh, this, you need so many of these to get to the next level and then to the next level. And then there's also this like fast mode that you have on each of the, the levels too. And then apart from all this, there's uh, some secret levels, which I found that you can also go to. Uh, but besides getting to the next level, you can also, you also get coins that you use to upgrade your raft and, and uh, all, all kinds of stuff. Like you have this uh, med, med kit healing thing you see in the bottom, the cannons, uh, aesthetic stuff like rugs, your, your big light, your headlight, whatever that, that's called that you have in the, in the top there. Not a very long game. It is short, but it is fun when you are playing with a group and the wanting to buy this is going to revolve around are you playing with other people? Because you can't play with randoms. You can't just hop online and play by yourself with other random people. And because of that, um, it I do recommend it, but I don't recommend it if you're playing it single player or two player. With single player especially, it's just pretty boring, honestly, where I'm uh, not doing a whole lot, managing this, managing that. And it really shines when you have the action going on, on screen and a lot of stuff happening and it's, and it's, it's really hectic. And then sometimes if there's an emergency, you gotta switch around and help, help one other guy. Like that's when it's a lot of fun. With two players, it's a little bit more of this, but still not enough. There's too many tasks to do and there's still not uh, enough action going on. So the ideal way to play, as it is a, is a short game, you know, you're looking at, I don't know, four to six hours if you're trying to do everything, maybe a little bit more. Um, if you buy it locally for 15 and you're playing at least with a couple other people, then it is actually worth a buy. The alternative to that is if you can play with a friend online, it does have that functionality, and then you still have like another friend playing with him, <laughs> her, or playing with you. You know, so you're at least getting those three people playing. Then it can still be worth it too. Like the price bumps up because you both have to buy the game. Four or 15 bucks, and as everybody shares the same screen, it's not any different of an experience than playing locally. So ideally, um, it is worth buying and just have those two other people to play like over a weekend, and then you'll have a lot of fun. If you do like this video, please give a like. Really like to consider subscribing. Don't forget to tap that bell. Tap the bell. I'll see you next time.